We good? All right. I'm here. I found a mo. The mis the mysterious man in white is what is what I was told. And I you're living you're already living up to the, the legend. I'm already living up to the legend for you. So I, I gotta ask first question. Uh, the name Mo is that Monero related? Because I uh, I'm told you're like the Monero guy. You're the guy I need to talk to regarding Monero. Yeah. <laughs> well, that may be right, and it may be a lovely coincidence that my name is Mo. No, actually, Mo is short for Mozart. Oh. Okay. So are, are you uh, a musician as well? In addition uh, to your Monero uh, hobby. Uh, I wish I could claim some uh, musical talent, but uh, no dice. Okay. So l let's get to it. Monero, why, are you, why, why, why Monero, and uh, what is it that you do with Monero? Or do you uh, participate in the community in any way? I was just told you got to talk to Mo. You're, you're into Monero, you got to talk to Mo. Uh, for me, it's like immediately usable for increased privacy. Okay, I, no matter what I'm doing, I don't care if I am buying chocolates at the community market with Monero or I'm paying you back for the gas for the trip we just took. Like, any way I find that we can integrate privacy preserving uh, technologies, uh, I, just, I just try to use them actively in my life and encourage others in this community to do so as well. So that's probably how you heard about it. Uh, I have, I will let you know, I have actually uh, had people suggest that I change my last name to Nero. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding in plain sight. You got it. Amazing, man. Uh, so have you always been a Monero guy or are you into other cryptocurrencies? Did you start off as a Bitcoin? Bitcoiner? Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I started off with Bitcoin. Uh, didn't know anything about any other uh, altcoins. Um, exactly what did the transition look like for me to discover these uh, privacy preserving coins? I'm not exactly sure and I don't exactly remember when. Uh, but what I do know is, you know, I had the same interests I did then as I did now. And one of those interests was the sort of increased privacy and security I could get off of using a privacy coin. And maybe it was after the, uh, uh, the arrest of um, Ross Ulbricht that I reassessed, well, wait a second, you know, how much anonymity am I really getting out of Bitcoin, and what are the alternatives? Do you think that that those thoughts are going mainstream? Will others start to realize this, or is it just something that a niche part of you know society is going to understand and appreciate this this need for privacy, the importance of privacy, especially with money and and, and you know obfuscating our transactions, or is that something that's going to be relegated to um, you know a small group of people that are actually going to care about it? Unfortunately, I think this is going to be up to the small people who actually care. And the reason why I think this is because, you know, throughout the history of uh, the development of the Internet, uh, you've seen plenty of cases where people are happy to just trade off uh, privacy for anything, uh, where it isn't even a consideration for them. And they don't even really consider um, any sort of OPSEC, any sort of uh, privacy until uh, their social security number is already out there and uh, they're already being defrauded. <laughs> That's my seven-year-old. So she's been loving Porkfest, by the way. She made like 100 bucks yesterday. Excellent. Um, but In Monero? Uh, she collect no. She, well, she was collecting dollars, ah. and then she discovered goldbacks. Excellent. And she actually came to me last night. She's like, "Wow." She's like, "So this hundred dollars." She's like, "You know, probably in ten years, this hundred dollars is going to be worth like a dollar." <laughs> so she's picking up something. And that then, is absolutely yeah. excellent that she's learning. Yeah, and I said, Fran, but why? She said, like, well, because I think there's there's better money. There's other money that can do things better than what this can do. Referring to fiat. I think that's exactly what describes 
uh, perhaps the shift that's going to happen. And uh, I think uh, there there might be hope that uh, the the marketplaces that use Monero, some of them online. Uh, have switched from using only Bitcoin to Bitcoin and Monero to only Monero, um, that those may help catalyze a push towards um, privacy that's larger than just the small, you know, people who actually care. Because right now we're living in a society, everyone's living in uh, governments that are in under governments that are incredibly restrictive about what uh, medicines they're allowed to uh, use for their body, how they're able to get them. This is a major point to why we need, need, need a private exchange of value so that people have the freedom and the autonomy to do with their bodies as they so choose. Yeah, it give, gives people the power to uh, maintain their own individuality is the way I look at it. Like ultimately, uh, you, you know, people need the freedom to transact uh, without censorship, without surveillance, so they can be who they are. And, uh, you know, as, as pessimistic as my uh, answer sounded, you know, that I, I really think this is going to be pushed by the small few who understand how important privacy is, uh, the market has been responding. Uh, we have seen competition in privacy coins and privacy preserving technology, which is incredibly in inspiring to me, uh, to the point where I've been hearing about now um, what layer two uh, technologies to try to create, like integrate uh, shielded Z, uh, Zcash sort of technology into Bitcoin with uh, on like layer two on like a side chain. So uh, what that tells me, the fact that devs are putting time and money and energy into developing that sort of technology tells me that they have been seeing a market demand for privacy that doesn't exist in Bitcoin today. Exactly, exactly. But unfortunately, they'll never be able to add privacy to the protocol level, right? I, I mean, it seems, it appears so, right, in, in Bitcoin? Yeah. They're, uh, Bitcoiners are not big on forks. You hard fork and uh, it's going to be a separate coin. How about adoption? So you live in New Hampshire, right? Yes. Uh, are you seeing Monero adoption? Are, are people aware of Monero? Are people using Monero? I mean, here I'm, I'm like, this is, you know, this is my dream come true. I'm, I'm spending Monero for every purchase I make. I've been living off Monero for the last four days. I know I'm going to regret it when I go home because I spent so much Monero. But are you seeing that type of adoption outside of, you know, Porkfest, but actually in New Hampshire? Yes, I am. And it's slow. I will, I will let you know that it is slow. The uh, crypto adoption has kind of been going up and down. It's slowly increasing, but up and down due to the efforts of people such as uh, the AnyPay guys uh, who helped uh, onboard transactions for businesses and make it easy for them to accept crypto on their own terms or exactly how they want. Um, but it's, uh, it's an uphill battle. I mean, it's kind of still shocking to me, given how many years ago I bought Bitcoin, that I suppose we're still in the early stage. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of price discovery to be had, and people are still skittish. A lot of uh, institutional investors... Um, are still balking at the idea of crypto or that they would hold any and considering that uh, the institutional investors who have bought in are just going to lose all of their money that they've purchased in. So we are still in the early stages of cryptocurrency and uh, we, the, we have people accepting Monero and accepting Zcash here today in New Hampshire for services that you want from uh, plumbing to soap, but uh, 
It can be more, and we're making to realize that. We're, we're working to realize that. Awesome, man. Are you doing anything in particular to help spread the adoption of Monero? One trick I learned from a Bitcoin journalist uh, fellow I know is asking a vendor if they accept a currency is helpful. And if many people ask the same vendor if they accept the cryptocurrency, sometimes is enough of a signal to let them know. But there is a an effect of it. So there there is this sort of uh, like hodl desire for people to not use cryptocurrency as cryptocurrency and use it as an investment vehicle instead. And that's just not going to enable the sort of freedom that this these technologies can allow us to have in privately transacting day to day with things we need without, you know, outside eyes looking into what we've bought, when we've bought it, who we bought it from. And so to, to sort of counteract that desire to a uh, hodl, what I found that can work well for people is instead of asking like, hey, will you accept this currency uh, that I think is actually valuable and uh, you won't take it, which is bizarre to me, uh, and I don't even really want to give it to you because you don't even understand the value of what I'm giving to you right now. And instead of, instead of that, literally, just with a few words, reframing it to, do you offer a discount for Monero? Do you offer a discount for crypto? Because then, you know, it switches. You're showing that it has value, more value than, than traditional payment In, methods. Instead of the frame being something like, uh, will you go through the hassle of accepting this strange new technology that some of your customers will use and some of your customers won't, it shifts it to, uh, I have something valuable to trade with you. Are you going to give me a discount to get in on it? Yeah. Well, I will say what works very well is offering change in Monero as, as, a, as a business, right? So uh, you paid for a coffee today with a $100 bill, and I was forced to give you change in Monero uh, reluctantly. <laughs> Uh, I wish I had a treasury bill so that I could give you maybe like, I don't know, uh, $100,000 and I'd only have to pay the 4% fee or yeah, the 4% basically on all of the coffees. <laughs> like I'm happy to do only give you, keep giving you $100 bills to get some Monero. <laughs> I know that wasn't your intended effect. Thank you so much, Mo. It was great meeting you. And uh, any any tips to me on what we should be doing? This is our first time at Porkfest. Is there anything that we uh, that's essential for us to do before we leave? I think you've got a pretty good idea of how to make it work. You're here selling things. You've got your child hustling. I mean, really, I you you've you've been here outside vending so that you can both listen to the events and serve people as soon as they come out of the events. I mean, I don't know, man. I think you've got it figured out. All right, all right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. So nice meeting you. We'll see you around, I'm sure. Hope you enjoy the coffee. Thank you. Thank you, Matt.